Um, since our, uh, uh, you know, looking at sort of the publications on this, most of these publications were basically originally done with PVA particles, but liquid embolic agents offer another modality for us to um, embolize with. So onyx is a liquid embolic agent that we use for AVMs and AV fistulas for embolization. What's nice about onyx as opposed to particles is that it's a more robust permanent embolic material. It doesn't resorb over time the way particles do. In addition, you can push onyx very, very distally. Um, what we found in our small amount of recurrent patients were that some of them had collateral branches from other arteries that we could not safely catheterize. And it's possible that that was continuing to feed the dura and cause rebleeding and uh, failure rate. Well, with onyx, you can push that liquid embolic agent all the way through the artery you're in and retrograde down into other collateral branches. The only thing about onyx is you have to be very careful with it because particles will go with the flow. You park the catheter approximately in the MMA, the blood flow takes it to where it needs to go. Onyx, you can push it to places where you, uh, where the blood flow is not going. So you have to be very careful and aware of collateral branches because you can easily push onyx into a branch you don't want to. So with onyx, we actually take our microcatheters very, very far out distally. What you see here in B and C is our microcatheter basically all the way up by the top of the cranium. And we get right up against where that subdural membrane is and push it there. In this way, we're very far away from any skull-based collateral vessels and uh, potential um, uh, feeders. This is what our onyx casts look like um, after embolization. Um, we are currently um, in the initial stages of our embolized trial, which is an industry-sponsored, randomized, controlled, multi-institutional trial where we have 45 centers throughout the U.S. recruiting patients for onyx embolization for MMA. Uh, for subdural hematoma. And we're studying two patient populations, those that have received surgery and we're randomizing them to uh, getting embolization or not. And those who have very small, uh, uh, mild symptoms and smaller subdural hematomas, and we're randomizing them to either observation or embolization. And we're studying obviously those two groups in a much more organized fashion. We've currently recruited 27 patients out of our plan 500. This is gonna be a two and a half year study. We just started it a few months ago. And um, we're obviously very excited to see those results because I think this randomized study will become um, uh, essentially the, the proof that we need to make this standard of care beyond just the case series and case reports that up to this point we've uh, been publishing on. But MMA embolization really is a very novel option for our patients. It obviates the need for general anesthesia. We're able to do these procedures under max sedation or no sedation at all. And this is important for an elderly patient population that doesn't do well with anesthesia or with open surgery. The risk of this procedure is less than 1%. It's essentially the risk of an angiogram, um, which is significantly less than burr holes or craniotomy drainage in an elderly patient population. We believe it addresses the cause of hemorrhage from the microscopic level, potentially without the need for open surgery. The indications in my practice are those patients who have worsening headache, gait instability, some mild focal motor deficit, single seizure or cognitive decline, which is how most chronic subdural hematoma patients present. Those that present with more significant neurologic deficit and larger hematomas still go for surgery up front. The procedure doesn't preclude surgery if it fails, um, but uh, it, it, uh, it is um, very effective at uh, preventing the need for surgery in 92% of patients. And used as an adjunct, it lowers recurrence rates uh, significantly. So our randomized trial now uh, will hopefully be the um, the gold standard uh, uh, reference point for this procedure. Um, I think future directions from this are, are multiple. So in addition to um, our randomized trial, there's uh, two competitive randomized trials as well. Um, I think that we are now beginning to use the radial artery route um, for elderly patients more than the femoral artery route, which also makes this procedure um, safer. Um, you can imagine a procedure that decreases arterial bleeding or any bleeding for that matter will be very powerful in a patient population that is coagulopathic. So we um, have performed these procedures on patients who um, are on aspirin or on Coumadin, who can't be taken off blood thinners for uh, multiple reasons, patients who have leukemia, patients who are coagulopathic with liver disease. Um, and now we're siphoning out the data amongst those groups too to see how effective it is. Right now it's early, but amongst the cancer patient populations, those with um, uh, leukemia and who have qualitative uh, and quantitative platelet defects, we found 14% recurrence rate in the 21 patients that we've treated, which is demonstrated here um, in the upfront EMBO group and a 0% so far recurrence rate in those who receive surgery at EMBO. Now, obviously this is a little bit uh, uh, 
suffers from selection bias because those who receive surgery in embo are obviously inherently better at clotting than those who uh, have probably required the embo up front. But even in the upfront treatment for a patient population that essentially we've had no options available to us uh, is a very powerful treatment modality. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.